Hello, welcome to the Donahue Group. Glad you could join us. We're very excited with this episode being the very first episode filmed in the brand new Martha Stewart designed <laughs> and, and implemented TV studio right here. It's quite, quite lovely. Great and, scoring. and we're just very happy to be a part of this glorious setting and everybody but Ken Risto dressed up today in order to celebrate that. It's summer, you can tell. It is summer. Yeah, he's delivering beer for some distributor <laughs> as far as I know. Well, his teachers never make enough. <laughs> so we'll start with Ken Risto in snappy blue um, doing something other than being a productive member of society this summer. Tom Paneski, also a teacher, so kind of like having an easy summer. That's correct. As the professor of mathematics. Oh, yeah. And you get to pass. I get beaten like a pinata and you get a pass. <laughs> okay, all right. Cal That's Potter funny. is retired, but working hard at a wide variety of other things. And oh, me, boy. I'm in a new law firm and I'm just working my little fingers off. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mary Lynn Donahue leading the discussion or the charge today, as, as the case may be. We're going to talk a little bit about city and county uh, issues as they uh, come out. And as we are uh, speaking and recording today, it is a glorious day in uh, the city of Sheboygan's history because the police station bid came in under budget. Um, the sky is falling, uh, one would have thought, with the various contamination issues that have been brought up, uh, I think, in May. Uh, contamination of the land and so forth. Apparently not so much a problem as originally um, um, uh, uh, expected. So the final cost is $9 million, $500,000 less than budgeted. My dim memory said it came in at $8 million, but I could certainly and apparently am wrong. Um, good deal? Bad deal? What do you think? Spend more. <laughs> oh, we'll wait till it's done, then it'll be over budget. No, no, have to well, answer originally, for that. The, one of the original guesses was seventeen million, right? And so they haggled and haggled and haggled and got it down to the current uh, bid. And the, I reading the paper today, uh, the construction bid was six point five mm -hmm. million, and then you have the design, and you have cleanup, and you have a few other things. So I think it's a good deal. It's just they got to get started, and hopefully they'll get started at the end of August, as they sa yeah. said. Um, I think um, it was my understanding that at least some of the money was designated for a renovation of City Hall, because once the police station is out, mm -hmm. there'll be... When you walk into that building now, it's not the loveliest public no, building I've ever been. No, it's not very welcoming. No, and um, I think there could be a wonderful collaboration between once the building is reconfigured, where's the mayor's office going to be? Do we save some money by moving the city attorney back into the into city hall mm -hmm. instead of renting a, a separate space? Um, you know, is there consolidation that can happen here and there? Um, well, you have the plan department too in a separate space. Right, yeah. right, and in that cute little red building across the street. Um, oh, that's engineering is across the street from City Hall, but you're right, plan, plan, plan is um, the, on the, the second floor, floor. With, yeah. with the city attorney. So I think when they reconfigure that, my idea is is that, and it's not my idea, but I, I'm hoping that it will be that the Kohler Art Center in a municipal art collaboration kind of decorates the place, makes it more of the people's place to come into. and Because it's a nice old building. Yeah, I think whoever did our yeah. set. Uh, there you go. Doing the, That's the, right. The I mean, look at that clock. That Very probably, retro. That cost them a lot on eBay. I, I'm here to tell you. So, you know, it... Uh, or goodwill, <laughs> one or the other. My grandmother had a clock like that. I love it. It's The sun is shining on all of us. But uh, in any event, do you think that the controversy about the police department, uh, excuse me, the police station is finally done? Well, I think it'll be depend on how it fits its needs when they move in, and we, we might hear about the squeeze on space. I mean, there's a big difference between, you know, what, six million construction and 17 million. Uh, as what they wanted is ideally garage space, uh, training space, whatever else they needed to have to fit a, a force of that size. I hope it really is adequate, not that they uh, have to say we need another building in about two years. Kind of like the Sheboygan Clinic. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, Alderman Boren, I guess, uh, was congratulated by uh, another alderman for his uh, requiring that the uh, garage be what steel frame constructed or something like that. 
And according to, that was worth about a million dollars on the bid. It's interesting too, the last time I looked at the plans, the municipal court had space in the police station. And that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, municipal court um, right now is held in the, I mean, when the court is actually in session, it's in the, the city uh, council chambers. Mm. And it's certainly not an ideal setting, but considering that it's not a full-time, everyday sort of court, it, that seemed to be fine. And then the clerks have a little office off to the side, and the, the finance department is there if people want to pay their mm -hmm. forfeitures and, and such. And I think if that municipal court space is in the new building, it shouldn't be, in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. I think people like to see a little distance between the prosecuting agency and the adjudicating mm -hmm. agency, mm -hmm. maybe just a little space in between, but I don't know. It's, it's neither here nor there. But What about the dead controversy of uh, having the county pay for the communications part of the... Yeah. Uh, well, we can the, kind of segue into what I think is a, a complex issue, and I, I don't know how, as an elected official, you play it or work it, but shared services was certainly a key campaign issue back in 2005. I think theoretically we all think it's a terrific idea. Um, it seems we've gotten back into more of the Hatfield-McCoy kind of uh, yep. conflict between the, between the city and the county, both I think having issues and points on each side. Can it have, ever happen? Will we? negotiate a peace settlement <laughs> between the city and the county that uh, that helps the taxpayers? Well, any time the or city... Or is that too, way, way too boring to talk <laughs> yes, about? No. I know. Well, it upsets the balance, really. <laughs> the, the, the city residents say, well, we pay for the sheriff's department, we pay for county services that we don't use, therefore, if we're going to join dispatch or something, we want to take and have you pay for the, the cost. Well, all of a sudden, your budget, if you're not contributing a certain amount on a certain account, then the budget's out of balance, and then what do you do? Then you have, whoever has to make up the dollars now is in a difficult position, and they're not going to raise taxes. So it's sort of, you know, a nice concept on paper, but when it comes to who's going to pay what, all of a sudden it gets, uh, comes to a screeching halt. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned that to Carl Beezing, the uh, county attorney, and he says, well, on the other hand, uh, who resides in the jails and who gets the most of the uh, city uh, welfare services? I mean, the welfare services. He said it's the city folk. And who's paying for that? The county folk. <laughs> so it's a mixed bag. <laughs> there's a lot of services city people get that are paid for by the county, and there's a lot of services the county gets that are also paid, uh, that are paid by the city, like the sheriff services. So, he was saying 80%, 95, 85% of the, those services uh, are city folk. Although the county, and my dear partner, I will not contradict, but a significant portion of county welfare money comes from state and federal sources. There is okay. the, the remnants of general relief, and that is that is county based. Um, okay. And uh, but that's true. I mean, poor people generally can't live out in the county because mm -hmm. they don't have any way to get <laughs> into, get the, in. right, into the city to, uh, to avail themselves of much of anything. And mm -hmm. so, but it is, isn't it? It's so complex. There's no easy answer. Um, It'd be nice if we could go back at the genesis of having seven police departments or whatever we have oh, in the yeah. county and say, well, how many do we need to serve 110,000 people? We'd come up with a different conclusion, a different organizational model, but when you have to go back now and dismantle police chiefs Jeez. and yeah. you know, municipal boards and people who know who I and know. whatever, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just terrible to try to unravel what's been in place for you know, 50 years or more. And people take great pride. I mean, it's the old town form of government. I mean, we have all these towns, all villages, um, as well as, as county, 72 county governments, and uh, I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of municipal units of government, not to mention school districts, yep. and, but we all take pride in those. Yep. those the, the, the democracy seems a little bit purer and uh, more participatory, the smaller it gets, and so I think you're right, it's really hard to go back and unwind 
unwind what has been in place yeah. and wound up for years and years. Especially in Wisconsin where you have a lot of units in local government. I mean, it's not just getting to the town level. You get into sewage districts and That's water right. districts yeah. and yeah. this I, district I, and I that don't. district. Uh, where as you start going south and particularly southeast in this country, you'll find more county-based services because right. the county was the basic service for serving some plantations. The sheriff used to go out and round up runaway slaves and so on. You know, it was very much uh, a more centralized, larger unit of government. When they went out west and they surveyed and the surveyors plotted out townships and so on, you started getting into a lot different government set up and we do have more units of government I think than many states for our size exactly. which is again a history that you can't undo very easily. And you saw that playing out uh, in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel there was a panel discussion they had all had, you know, Walker and they had Barrett and they had all sorts of folks from around the metropolitan area of Milwaukee and it's the same discussion that we're talking about here the very same one they're wrangling about well you you want to do light rail but that'll destroy the county you know bus system and it only serves this municipality. Well, what about, well, yes, that's true, but what about water over here and, you know, shared mm -hmm. resources, resources and water? And it's the same issue of trying to untangle who benefits and who pays and what's an equitable way of doing that. I think also there's still some folks who really think that the city pulled the county, the rug out from under the county on ambulance service. And uh, yeah. that's, there's going to be some backdraft to that yet. Mm -hmm. That's still there. That's, mm -hmm. There's some hard feelings that this, this city made this decision from their perspective unilaterally and if the city wants to go their own way on this well then why are they why are we even talking about cooperation over here in this in this issue and I I'm a little more pe I'm pessimistic that they're gonna make any real progress for another couple of years yet on this it's gonna take a long time to hang yeah, a lot yeah. I think the issue almost has to be reframed and leadership coming forward in a reframed kind of way that gets people not thinking about this little thread that's wound here and that little thread that's wound here, but a bigger picture that says what's good for everybody and let's do some zero-based planning. If, if we could start over, what would it look like? And, um, and get people excited about those concepts. And that's fairly utopian. I mean, I don't know as how that's ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but from my perspective, that's the only way to do it. Because there are grievances you know, this is the, you know, this is, this is the Middle East. This is Northern and Southern Ireland, you know. I mean, they're, they're just these long, entrenched kinds of conflicts. And, and what, what does it take to, to bring it forward into a, to a solution? I don't know. Yeah, sure. And we don't seem to be making uh, uh, a whole lot of progress. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, the, but, um, uh, go ahead. But, no, the uh, police station is going to be built. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, and um, and I think that I think that's a I think it's a good deal. And the, redoing the city hall, in my view, is going to be just a whole lot of fun. I think, of course, I'm partial to the art center. I think all of us here are. But um, um, the municipal art projects that are out there and bringing arts and municipalities together to enhance public spaces to me is exciting stuff that's going on all around the country and to kind of get it going here in Sheboygan will be fun. Um, AT&T is sticking it to charter. Um, I was actually away when uh, this news broke, but um, apparently AT&T has a uh, new service called U-verse, U-verse, kind of like U-versity. I, <laughs> U-versity, <-verse, laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, and. Uh, um, it's certainly a competition with Charter Communication, which hasn't had a whole lot of competition as far as I can tell, at least locally. Um, here we are in this wonderful Martha Stewart decorated studio and um, with high quality camera people and you know the top paid mm -hmm. producers in the land and, and so on and oh, so forth. Yeah. Courtesy of Charter's payments to the, um, to the, uh, right. to the uh, city. Um, and uh, AT&T says it doesn't have to do that. It doesn't have to make those payments that uh, Charter, um, by virtue of its exclusive cable contract, uh, does need to. Uh, um, Alderman Manny is not very happy. He said there's some real concerns. Um, one of them is the $150,000 a, a year that uh, Charter pays for this TV station in all seriousness and police cars and so forth. 
Now, AT&T says it's going to pay voluntarily a quarterly fee of 5% of gross revenues. What do you and think? And then voluntarily, you'll stop <clears throat> paying. <laughs> I don't know, you know. They could say that, and they may do that for a year. Mm -hmm. And then they could say, well, change my mind. Uh, business practices say we shouldn't do that, so uh, we won't. Yeah. Because they won't be held by any uh, kinds of contract or anything. So. Yeah. My own view is that... Uh, and it also will go to the state, I guess that's the... Correct. Well, under the, that, that new bill. The new bill, it yeah. wouldn't go to the state, it wouldn't go, and then the state has to send it back to the local community. Right. So that's an extra step. Well, yeah. and we've talked about that on this show, and it's, it doesn't sound like a very good plan, at least for local, uh, local ca cable yeah. TV stations and so forth. Um, technology is changing at such mm -hmm. an extraordinary pace. Um, just think now of the things that I just got back from a nice little vacation in Boston. I booked my airline tickets. I booked my hotel. Um, you know, I found out what the weather was. I checked on things to do. You know, just for a two-day period of time, my computer is on at my desk at work constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, I do a whole lot through the internet in terms of legal research and so forth. In other words, I'm just saying my world is totally different than it was even five years ago. Sure. Uh, where are we going to be in five years? Is this internet, telephone, TV service all bundled in one is probably going to be wildly anachronistic? I, I don't know. It's, Futurists are saying that. Futurists will tell you that your television set will be your computer will be an interactive one station that you have wherever you have it in your house. Right. You will do everything. It will be your visual tele telephone, uh, video phone. It will be uh, your computer. It will be your television on demand. What program you want, from what date, from what year. And that will be delivered to you by uh, wireless, by uh, wire, or whatever you choose right. to, to have. So I think the issue of franchises it's not going to get any easier for anybody because the delivery system is going to be so uh, diverse. It'll be pretty wild, I yeah. think. And, It'll be, and it's going to be more and more wireless as well. Yeah. We had to buy a, uh, one of our televisions at the house, finally gave up the ghost, and we uh, bought a high-definition uh, high television. Um, and uh, there are portals in there for things. I'm not even sure what they're there for. <laughs> I, know one, I know one's for the computer, one is for the computer, and I'm, yeah. I'm still sort of going through the manual mm -hmm. to learn, well, what is this for and what's that for? And uh, so I've had, we've had some high definition channels <clears throat> through Charter, as it happened to be at the, at the point. And it's, it's uh, pretty nice. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really pretty nice. And I bought me one of them their blueberries, oh, <laughs> a, oh, yeah. okay. a little blackberry. And yeah. what fun that is. I mean, the, mm. the 128th of it that I can figure out. But uh, um, in any event, I would just suggest that rather than futzing and dutzing with worrying about, I think that cable purveyors, particularly if they have exclusive contracts, should support cable TV. But the budget for this particular television station is not very large. And somewhere, this is a public good, and we're going to get into the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the budget, that creature that creeps out of the lagoon um, in our next episode or our next uh, segment. But um, $150,000 a year to bring quality television programming to a local community, to me, is a no-brainer. Yeah. It shouldn't be that it disappears because we take another action. If we're going to take an action to, to deal with, with one thing or another, we ought to be able to find the money to keep this kind of programming going. Uh, a little clarification. The, the paper did say the franchise fee is $450,000, mm -hmm. $150,000 of which goes to right. TV8, and $300,000 goes to what you said, uh, Squad cars, police squad right. cars, yeah. And I don't know what 5% of gross revenues from AT&T is going to be. Gonna be yeah. 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 Well, yeah. well the, I assume that it means 5% of the gross revenues, gross of, revenues the, of the city they get from the city of Sheboygan. The city, yeah. So the more people that enlist in AT&T, the more money than supposedly the city of Sheboygan would get. Would get. On, on I, I'm not a big AT&T fan. I had a 
bad experience at AT T AT and T some years ago. And well, I, let's not get into defamatory. I <laughs> uh, let's just I kind to of. Go there. Just she's kind an of. attorney, but she doesn't want to be sued. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have so much grief I'm in sorry, my I life. I know you that AT and T got an exemption from the First Amendment, but maybe yeah. they do. But uh, <laughs> in any event, well, just settle down. Settle well, I just know I don't really understand why. I mean, it raises the question of what's the responsibility of a large corporation. Uh, to a local community when they provide a service to that community. I mean, there's the, the there's the yeah. you know pure economics model which says they're offering a service, and their responsibility is a service to the to the person they're selling the product to, and they're they're promising people in Sheboygan telephone service, long distance and local distance, and local television and computer you know Internet, yeah. connect connecti connectivity. Yeah, and you know for a price, and that's our responsibility. We don't have any responsibility to the you know. We don't need no stinking local stations, you know, <laughs> yeah. that sort of thing. Well, but the I mean, that's one philosophy, and I understand yeah. that. And there are people out there who say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to have any of my money going to, to Channel Eight and listening to Aristo, you know, bloviate over here. And I don't, you know, yeah, fair I don't enough. Yeah, blame them. You know, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, that's a. I mean, point it's one well point taken. of view. Yeah. Yeah. But that's my right. concern is, where does the local government uh, pick up that lost revenue? And it's true. And, and there yeah, isn't yeah. a whole lot of room in the state budget for well, it. Well, at what point is it important? Well, maybe a lot of people don't watch the local school board proceedings or the county board or the city council. Mm -hmm. You would it, be surprised. It, it is there and mm -hmm. it should be because that is your government and people don't go down to city hall or to school building to see what's happening. Right. And they're paying for all of this and they ought to have some access to mm -hmm. what's going on. And I think these local channels are the only thing that really is going to connect people with their, their local officials and their democracy mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day regular mm -hmm. basis. Yeah, I, and yeah. Well, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it goes and we'll see how AT&T does and will Charter reduce its prices in terms of competition, that other economic model, and um, uh, it'll, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Um, totally different subject. Uh, there was an article in the Sheboygan Press not so long ago about restaurants and bars in town going smoke free. Now, I was in Dublin, Ireland for a week in uh, November of 2005, so almost two years ago. And when my husband and I had been there previously in 84, the smoke in the pubs was so thick that you went in and kind of clawed your way to the bar and, and through the smoke and, and we, we weren't able to stick it out very long. Ireland is now smoke-free in pubs and restaurants now. Talk about a revolution. So there does seem to be in Sheboygan um, a fierce streak of independence that says, if I want to smoke, I ought to be able to smoke. And yet I'm seeing that places that are totally smoke-free now actually are prospering. Mm -hmm. And um, the economic model. <laughs> <laughs> People come, they enjoy not having the smoke around. Mm -hmm. I, I, my mm -hmm. wife will go into a place she could smell it. Mm -hmm. She leaves. Let's let's go. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. There's a great cartoon in the New Yorker of, um, and this is what is happening in Dublin: is that there are these great heaters and, outside, and all all the tables, and of course, people are still smoking like crazy, um, but they're all outside. <laughs> and so the cartoon in the New Yorker is the people on the outside of the bar saying, I'm going to go inside for some fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm, not, I'm not quite sure, uh, quite sure it works that way, but... Uh, well, when you look at the demographics yeah. of it, what, uh, if you're lucky, 20-some percent of the people smoke. So you've got almost 80% of the people who don't mm -hmm. smoke. And if you're offering a product or yeah. a service, where are you going to target? I mean, you're not going to target... I think what will happen, you're going to get most restaurants and bars are going to be smoke free and then there are going to be people who are going to say, well there is that specialty group out there that I'm going to target and so you're sure. going to have a few c cigar bars or something where oh, people, yeah, can, yeah. You know, sure. people can smoke and do those things and they'll congregate in certain areas, which is basically maybe what it, what it should be in any That's the model that should be out there. People who really want to smoke and go with the other people who want to smoke, but 80% of the people want to have fresh air. Mm -hmm. It's, it's interesting. Well, um, we'll see. Um, the, the thing that I liked about the newspaper article, it was the, um, a sign in a brand new restaurant in town that says, if you're smoking in here, you better be on fire. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of cute. So um, speaking of fire uh, rising from the ashes, um, the landmark yes. apartment uh, complex is uh, starting to be built again. 
And uh, it seemed to me to take a very long time to get started, which makes sense. I mean, obviously, construction people had other, other uh, um, venue or other jobs and uh, other commitments and so forth. But it is nice to, to see it uh, to go back up. Um, mm -hmm. It takes a while for insurance companies to cough up that amount of money, too. It, it was really a big does. loss. I think it went pretty promptly. Yeah, compared yeah. to some things. Yeah, but I, I think it went pretty promptly. Mm -hmm. be, uh, only, and I only know that because my spouse was involved in some of that. What's the uh, reward for information? For the, uh, is it up to 100 grand? Is I it 100,000 now? Yeah, it was just it increased. It was raised, yeah. It raised yeah. 100,000 for information for the, yeah. the arson. Well, well just, I hope somebody could provide it. It would be yeah. nice to catch the person, yeah. four persons. Yeah, it really would. Um, just just as we're coming to a close here, because I had such a good time, and it is not a new colored printer, but... Show and tell. It is. Technology I, in action. I just thought this was kind of interesting. And I'm just going to hold it up, and absolutely nobody is going to be able to... <laughs> it's like a peace sign, isn't it? It, it is kind of a peace sign, but I, I just am interested in your comments. This is a national survey of county elected officials in 2007. So it's pretty recent. Political affiliation of county elected officials, 40% Democrat, 42% Republican, 18% Independent. Ideology, however, self-reported, 58% conservative. Middle of the road, I love that. Middle of the road, 30% and liberal, 12%. So I thought that was a kind of a stark contrast. Um, I just think it's easier calling yourself a conservative sure, than a liberal. Especially when you're at a local level that, in many cases, spends property tax dollars, a regressive, unpopular tax. And I don't know how many liberals are going to say I like to spend property tax money. And mm -hmm. this, is, um, this is illustrative, and uh, just to end our, our little discussion today, gender of elected officials, we have 17% female and 83% male. Boy, it doesn't change that much, does it? And race of county elected officials, 88% white, 5% black, 4% Hispanic, and 3% others. So doesn't it, reflect uh, society. Yeah. No. It's, um, it's, it's, it's very interesting that um, I think at, at the county level, things perhaps move, move even slower. Of our 34 county board members, who are a nice group of folks, one woman. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, I we had balance in the, in the district, Sheboygan Area School District uh, board for a little while. It yeah. was almost 50 50, but it's been drifting the last few election cycles to, I really think, what? Uh, Barb and Maeve and. That's it? Lower my voice, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, well, nice to talk. <laughs> a little disjointed here today, but uh, well, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again, I hope.